Thank you, young people. Appreciate you doing that. Appreciate you letting the Lord work in your heart. That's tough to get up here in front of anybody, isn't it? Yeah, you're like, yeah, it is. Listen, I, I get it, right? I'm up here right now, so I get it. I get it. No, you did a great job. Thanks for letting you... Uh, letting the Lord work through you. And th as a church family, thank you for letting us go to camp like that. Many of you prayed, uh, not most of you prayed, many of you helped support financially as well. Thank you for that. And pray for these young people now. The, the teenagers are not the life of the church. Jesus Christ is. But don't let them have the most of Jesus Christ in the church either. All right? This church shouldn't be on fire just because the young people are. All right? I hope they are. I want them to be. We're praying for that. But they ought to see us adults. All right, and some of us need some camps sometimes as well. We need a camp as well. Well, if you need a handout, raise your hand. They'll bring one to you as we continue on our series tonight. And I do know the time, but I'll be out. I'll be out just where we're supposed to be. Don't worry about that. Top 10 ways to ruin your kids. We are at number nine tonight. Number nine tonight. We are right there at the end. Uh, almost we can, see the, we can see the end in sight. In top 10 ways inside this handout, you'll find another sheet, uh, two half sheets, and uh, one half sheet will be a prayer sheet. And make sure you pray for those requests. If you want to see the full list, you can go online to fpc.com backslash prayer to submit or to pray. And then you also see another half sheet that says parent conversation starters. And a few weeks back, we talked about how you as parents ought to communicate with your children. And children with, with adults and back and forth. And these questions would be good for a lot of people just beyond parents and children. But you'll find on that half sheet some questions that would help prompt us and spur some conversations. You can ask young people, elementary age kids, uh, things like if you won $100, what would you do with it? Just to find out what your kids would say and get some conversations going. And then some questions if your kid's in high school as well. Just some helps along the way. Of course, we've got a number of good books in the bookstore to help you. As we continue, though, in, uh, in our series on top ten ways to ruin your kids, there's those, those three passages at the top of your page. Proverbs 22, 6, where the Bible says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Ephesians 6, 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Psalm 127, 3 and 4, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of his, the room is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. These four principles, we've gone over them every single week. We'll hit them one more time. Number one, very few people are trying to ruin their children. Very few people are trying to ruin their children. But number two, we are all going to make mistakes. I think Pastor Ryan alluded to Brother Rupel saying that, his dad saying that. And uh, the way Pastor Ryan tells it, I think he said his dad has made all the mistakes. At least that's what he told me. And uh, no, it was Mrs. Rupel made all the mistakes. No, I won't believe that for a second. No, no, no. Between the two, I'm blaming, I'm blaming Brother Rupel over Mrs. Rupel for sure. But we're all going to make mistakes. Parents, isn't that the truth? Uh, just by the nature of being alive and human, we're going to make mistakes. That's just reality. In fact, that's true for everyone under the sound of my voice. We're going to make mistakes not because we want to, not because we desire to, and uh, not because we're going to excuse it away, but because reality is until we become just like Jesus Christ and translate it by until he takes us into heaven with him, until that point, we have this thing called the flesh inside of us. And whether you're 6 or 66, you deal with the flesh. Hopefully, the longer you live, the closer you come to Jesus Christ, the more victory he gives you in your Christian life. Victory is offered. It's not an excuse. But the fact is we're all going to make mistakes. Number three, we must realize our incorrect tendencies, actions, and attitudes and make corrections. Again, for parents specifically, but for all walks of life, wherever you're at, you see something that doesn't please Jesus Christ, change it. You go to camp, right? You see something that's wrong? Change it. Don't put it off. You do it now. Parent, adult, change it. And then number four, God brings practical truth and help from Scripture to our parenting. Lord, I pray you'd help us these next few moments as we look at your word and these thoughts. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to understand and understand ways that you would help us to be better parents. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Number nine tonight, number nine out of the top ten ways, if you want to ruin your kids... Then take their side and believe them. Then take your side, take their side and believe them. You say, oh boy, Pastor. You see, I was principal for 12 years. I have stories. I can't share most of them. Not yet. Give me another 10, 15 years, then I can share stories. 
Not that it would happen at a great place like First Baptist Church and Bridgeport Baptist Academy, and we are in a blessed place with, with great young people and tremendous parents. But we're not perfect. We're not perfect. But I have seen this particular idea rear up its ugly head every once in a while. Can you believe that? And let's talk about that tonight. What does it look like when you take your kid's side and believe them? A few ways it displays itself. And number one there, you'll see this, this little phrase, the blank there. Parents become incensed as their child relays a reprehensible story from school. Something has happened at school, and they come home and tell their parents, and parents, you go ballistic. Now, not these parents at this school, but, you know, generally speaking, right, in a broad sense, not at Bridgeport Baptist Academy, not at First Baptist Church, not when we're surrounded by Christians, well, probably, yes, even here. Your child comes home and they says, Mom, they say, Mom, Dad, you'll never believe what happened today. They are picking on me at school. Well, who's picking on you, Johnny? The teachers. They don't like me. Really? I can't believe it. I knew that staff didn't like you. I could tell they didn't like you. And it's like, tell me more. And then we get a phone call. Why don't you like my child? Well, it's not personal. We actually like them. It's actually you we don't like. No, no, I, I am just kidding. I'm just kidding. But you, I think you know what I'm talking about when a parent becomes incensed when they find out a situation took place and, and instantly they go from zero to a hundred quicker than a Ferrari. Number two, parents react to exactly what their children say in their interpersonal interactions. There is a, there is a term right now in, or has been a term in school situations, and it's this term bullying. Have you heard this buzzword a little bit? Past 10, 12 years, anti-bullying. Now listen, no one likes a bully, except the bully himself. Besides that, no one likes a bully, right? Bullying is a real thing, all right? But there are a lot of things that are not bullying that are called bullying. I would call them the flesh. One time, situation. They are bullying my child, well, what's happening? They are calling, they are, they, are, they are teasing them about some physical attribute. Fair enough. We don't want that to happen at school. We shouldn't be teasing each other, right? It would never happen at home, right? So we wouldn't have that at school. Okay. Upon further investigation, upon further investigation, the aforementioned student was also teasing other students about physical problems. Well, that's not bullying. That's the flesh. That's not treating each other properly, right? One time a parent called and they said, listen, I'm not happy, a young, a young child. They said, the students called my child fat. I said, listen, that's not acceptable. It's not, not acceptable, not at all. I said, let me find out what happened. It is wise to find out, we'll talk about this in situations, what took place, as opposed to just reacting. So I pulled into one student and said, listen, what happened here? I said, so-and-so called me fat. Oh, boy, that's not good. Not good. All right. I went to so-and-so. You called him fat? Yes. I called him fat. Why? They called me short. So, okay. Well, then we don't have bullying then. We have the flesh. The flesh. But parents just see, and sometimes, just the one side. They can't do that. Now, what my kid did was okay, but the other child, they stepped over the line, believing just what they say. Parents say something like this sometimes, if I don't fight for my kids, no one will. Well, parents, a side note, if you get nothing else from the message, then please do get this. But get some more things, but get this. We are not called to fight for our kids. All right? We're called to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. They are my kids. The second blank there. Understand this. They are on loan from the Lord. So when you fight these battles, you're fighting the wrong battles. 
The, the, term, the current term is a helicopter or a lawnmower parent where you run over, mow down every obstacle in your child's path. Human psychology, human psychologists have now told us that this produces a very weak individual. You can read this on psychology websites, not Christian websites. They say the end result of doing this is a child who exhibits the same behavior. Now get this. You can look this up later on. Don't do it now. The same behavior as a child who has no parents, as an orphan child. When I read that, I was shocked. I would have thought maybe something different reaction, but this is what the psychologists have said, that if you mow down every single obstacle and say, I've got to fight for my kids, it's a God-given right. It's not in the Bible. You will find it. Um, you think, I will help my kids, when in reality, even society says it actually hinders your children. You can believe that you will be different in this, but you won't be. So when you're not... All right, just remember that I've tried to warn you this day and say, listen, be careful. Be careful. This is what they say. This is not, this is not J.D. Howell, all right? This is other data bringing in. So number three, let me, I, I can't go too long, but number three, parents, parents publicize their irritations regarding their children's offenses without verifying information. Now, we will deal with this later on inside of this lesson, um, about, about what we have a tendency to do, parents, and really people in general, with the advent of social media, it has merely magnified the situation. It did not create the problem, it magnified it. All right, but we'll look at that. But you'll see it sometimes, all right, that uh, you'll have parents in the front of the car and two kids in the back seat, right? And they're picking at each other, all right? And one child, one sibling says... You know, James, stop it. Without turning around, without investigating, what is a parent likely to say? James, stop it. Right? Reacting, publicizing the irritation without seeking all the information. Listen, I know how this operated as, a, as one of seven kids. Normally, I was on the brunt of this as an older sibling, all right? Kids learn how, if you figure out how to work this system very early on, very early on, how to get this turn, you're like, oh, and what does the other child respond? Mom, Dad, why are you telling me to stop it? They were poking me. Oh, the response, no more information. Hey, you stop it too. Both of you stop it. Don't make me pull this van over. If I pull this van over, someone's not going to be happy. Oh, I think it's going to be you, Dad. You're not happy. No, 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 you don't. Things you think that you should never say, young people. All right, the whole list of those. Let me give you quickly some deceptive thoughts. All right, some things we have to learn we don't understand. Number one, remember this where we get to the truth from God's word. People don't generally understand how memories work. People do not understand generally how memories work. There's a website there. You can look at it later on. How memories can be falsified. You're like, well, my child would never get the details mixed up. Bless your heart. You truly have a savant in your household. We have a career for them. All right? Reality says that memories are very, very fickle. Very fickle. In fact, recently, uh, my family had, had watched this show. It was, I don't know about all of it, but they had a show where they had a crime happen. And it was like a kind of reality. They had a crime happen. And then they had 20 people who did not know they were being filmed um, come together and witness the crime, I witnessed the crime, and then they interviewed them like they were on a, journey, a jury. Incredibly intriguing. They actually planted two people to be a false witness inside of this, and these people said things like this. And I wrote down some of the quotes. I would go on the stand and testify that the lady had a red sweater on. She didn't. She had a gray coat on. But he is swearing, he would swear on the Bible that she, that she had this and testify and convict the criminal. The other one, I am admit, I, I, no mistake, that the lady's coat was fill in the blank. They went on, one person said, they stole the camera. Camera was never there. They had a hat on, no hat at all in the scene. They dropped it and we got to watch it Listen to them testify and just say, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I will testify and see them convicted of this. And then at the end, they got the scene played back to them. The one guy said, 
I'm in shock. I thought for sure she had a red coat on. I was sure. I now doubt everything I ever knew. <laughs> wow. Big jump. <laughs> Big jump. You see, good people can both misrepresent and not remember correctly a situation. This is why we have, in situations, we have, you know, person A and person B, and they don't line up. I remember one time in the school, I had a situation like this. I had two wonderful people, good Christians, and they're both in the same room, in the same situations, and it was not even close. I was a young principal then. I remember sitting there listening to this, and I'm like, what is going on? My first thought was, someone's lying to me. Someone is just flat out lying, but I'm listening to them communicate this story, and they're both like, this is the gospel truth. In, in a sense, they were saying, I would get on the stand and testify about this. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how, how, could, they, how could they have missed it so badly? And, and the hard thing with being an authority, especially being a principal, I often say being a principal is you have to walk into a situation that you're not part of, hear it from people who don't remember correctly, and to make a judgment call that's completely right the first time that will be quoted to you for the next 25 years because everyone else will remember what you decided back there. It's a wonderful privilege. I remember thinking, boy, what's going on? And learning about this, people don't understand how memories work. Memories can be faults in our mind. That's why we as parents must know this about our children. They may be sincere. Mom, Dad, this is what happened. And they may not be trying to falsify the information. They, not, they may not be trying to lie. They may not just be accurate. And we would look like a fool if we believe everything they say. Sorry, teenagers. Number two, people don't understand how the flesh works. Forget memories for a moment. We have the flesh inside of us. The flesh desires to do three things. Number one, the flesh desires to defend itself. The flesh is not interested in the truth. The flesh is interested in itself. And the flesh will defend itself. Number two, the flesh is, desires to deny. All right, Jesus Christ brings truth. The flesh brings deceit. Jesus said... Before we're saved, we're of our father, the devil, the father of lies. All right? The flesh is a liar. And the flesh inside of us wants to deny wrongdoing. And number three, the flesh desires to destroy. A little quote there. Most people will only tell you what they, are, what they believe you already know. Most people will only tell you what they believe you already know. These years back, I was in the principal school, school's principal. I walked down the hallway and I smelled a horrific smell. Someone had dropped a stink bomb in the school hallway. Well, those things did not um, go unmentioned very, very long. And within about three to four minutes, a student comes, had come to tell me, hey, so-and-so dropped the stink bomb in the hallway right before they left to go to the dentist. I'm like, okay. So I went as I could as their principal. I went to their locker. They were gone. I opened up their locker and looked. And sure enough, there was a pack of stink bombs. I don't know how many were in there, six or five, whatever it was, a pack of six. And if there was six, there was one gone from the, from the package. Didn't take, didn't take Sherlock much to figure this out, right? So the person was on the way to the dentist, and I called the, the person that was driving them. I said, hello, so-and-so. And they said, hey, hey, coach. I said, great. I said, can I talk to... Can I talk to this, to this young man? And um, this young man got on the phone. I said, so-and-so, how you doing? Great. I said, do you know anything about a stink bomb in the hallway? No, sir. Okay. So that's interesting because the word on the street is that you dropped a stink bomb. Some response along these lines, nope, not me, or something along those lines. Nope, not me. No, okay. Okay, I said, well, that's interesting, because I was just in your locker, like I'm allowed to do as principal, and I found a package, and one is missing. <laughs> oh, I still remember this phrase. Oh, you mean those stink bombs. 
I should have asked about those stink bombs. They didn't know that was what they're called. And uh, yes, I mean those stink bombs. The flesh, all right? Defend, deny, and destroy out of the way. Parents, that's what the flesh does. And your kid has the flesh inside them just like you and I do. All right, when they come, understand the flesh is still very active. And number, number three there, uh, parents don't always remember how kids work. Parents, let me help you a little bit. That first phrase there, they know you better than you think they do. Parents, they know you better than they think they do. Kids know who to ask what for. And which parent will say yes and no? Landon, you're right there. Do you know which, which question to ask mom or dad? All right, so if you want to go get ice cream, who are you asking? Dad. Dad's ice cream. Johnny, now, fair, fair game, bet. And Brandon, right, Johnny's right here. Johnny, if you want ice cream, who are you asking? Mom. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> no. No, you, you guys know. Levi, Levi, oh, only your mom, yeah. You guys know who to ask, don't you? They know, parents, they know us better than, the, sometimes the, the we forget how, how well they know us. You know who to go to who's going to feel badly for something, and which parents are going to say, like, listen, get over it, don't you? Parents, they know this. They know this. Why do you think they're telling you these things? Is it just for sympathy, perhaps, or maybe they know you better? Now, I knew which parent to ask for for money. Neither one. <laughs> they also, second blank there, they know how to manipulate your emotions better than you think they do. Now, some of you parents, you're like this, no, 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 they don't. Nope, I'm in full control of my emotions. No, sir. No, pastor, you are wrong. My, my kids could not manipulate my emotions. Again, probably the same child that has a perfect memory. Bless their heart. They do. They do. Um, your kids, we, we read nonverbals. Most of communication is nonverbal communication. And your kids, when they walk in the house, they know who's happy and who's sad. They know in the day, like, uh-oh, steer clear of dad right now. <laughs> right, Mark? Steer clear of dad right now, you know? Or they know, uh-oh, steer clear of mom right now. They, they, they know all this. They know this. They know this. They know how to rile you up. They know how to change the subject on homework. They know how to get you off track. They know this, your emotional level. My daughter still comes to me. I told you a few weeks ago, she'll come in the morning and say, Daddy, you're so handsome. A very smart child. I'm just so impressed that the Lord would bless me with someone so wise in my house. They know, you know. Parents remember this. So let me very quickly give you the correct response. Let me give you three verses, correct response. How do we combat this? Because we don't want to be those parents who just jump off the cliff and then find out that we've been made a fool of because we're completely wrong. And maybe you've been in that spot before. When you've been in a spot and you've reacted emotionally and you've gone over the top and come to find out the situation was nothing like you thought it was. Instead of admitting you're wrong, parent, Instead of admitting you're wrong, you then turn that emotion because you're embarrassed on your child. How could you do this to me? Why did you lie to me? How did you, you, you made me look like an idiot. No, you made yourself look like an idiot. Listen, I'm not not trying to be mean. I'm just just trying to help us tonight. All right, with a little, there's three verses that I think will help us. All right, here we go. Proverbs 18, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Parents, it would be great if you begin to search out matters before you react. That's the Bible. Search it out. Second one, Proverbs 18, 13. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. The idea is not just hearing it, but understanding the the, the situation. James 1, 19 and 20 tremendous verse. You could write it on an index card, put it on, the, on your screensaver, post it in your car, on a mirror at home, on your uh, everywhere. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The biggest problem when we just react is not that we'll be ashamed and folly and look like a fool. 
but is the fact that the wrath of man doesn't work God's righteousness. That means at that point, we are not furthering the kingdom of God. We're going against the kingdom of God. This is a big deal. This is a big problem. If I now turn myself against God and his kingdom and righteousness for the sake of a situation that typically, if I have a little bit of patience, I find out more to the story. And I find out there was some error, but maybe wasn't as grievous, reprehensible as I first heard about a little quote there that I found, three sides to every story, your side, my side, and the truth. Let me give you four blanks here, very briefly, in the last couple minutes here, four blanks here, um, help you here. Number one, the first blank there, listen to your kids. I am not saying don't listen to your kids. Your kids need to know that they have a voice. Be swift to hear. That's the Bible. Listen to your kids. Listen. I'm not saying, listen, nope, kids, don't talk to me. Don't tell me the situation. Let them talk to you. Let them talk to you. Let them communicate. We've hit this before. Gave you those questions tonight. Let your kids communicate. Hopefully, young people, you can talk to your parents. All right, listen to your kids. They got a problem, listen to it. They feel like they're bullied at school. They should have a voice with mom and dad. Absolutely. I am not saying, do not walk away saying, well, oh yeah, that's it, kids. Not going to believe you at all. So listen, you, you know, nope, that's not it. Nope, nope, no. Nope. No, they need to have a voice. One thing I tried to do when I was principal is give our students a voice. You can talk to me. Now, just because you say something doesn't mean I'm not going to search it out and try to find the truth with the Lord's help. But you have a voice, and it's a real voice. You can voice concerns. You can say, boy, I felt, I felt even, maybe even the student, or even sometimes once in a while, they felt a teacher was maybe out of line. Come talk to me and let's work it out. Let's find out what happened here. I'm okay with that. You have a voice. Parents, let your kids have a voice. Number two, though, question your kids. Question. What happened? Ask some clarifying questions. What did you say? Often I would ask this question, when I talk to so-and-so, what will they tell me that you did? When I talk to so-and-so, when I talk to your teacher, what will they tell me that you did? Oh, I don't know, they're going to make up something probably. They're, gonna, they're probably going to say something crazy like I was rolling my eyes and throwing things at them. Well, that's funny because that's what they said actually. That's really weird. They're probably going to say that I was sleeping in class, but although I wasn't sleeping, my head was down, and I was snoring, but I was making snoring sounds. What will they, what will they tell me? Sometimes that can open up the conversation. You can bring some light to it. I asked a question this time. Did you do or say anything that could have possibly helped this situation along? Usually the first response in these situations is no, no. Not at all. So, so there's nothing that you said. No, I mean, well, I, 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 mean, I said something, but, but they shouldn't have gotten mad about that. <laughs> well, just humor me real quick. Just tell me what you said, just so let me be the judge of that. You know, well. But then after that, number three, to help us follow the Bible, question those involved when appropriate. All right, let me give you a couple caveats inside of this, all right? Let's say that you, your child has a problem with another child at school, not your child. I would not recommend or allow you to go after that child and question them. What would you do to my child? No, no, you, if you have a problem with another child, you talk to the parent first, all right? That's why I put when appropriate, when appropriate. All right, do not come to this church or school and go after other kids who you think hurt your kids. We have watched this happen inside of sports before, right? Maybe you've seen these parents have just gone off the wagon in sports. Not here. I'm talking about like out there, right? And it's crazy. It's crazy. You need to question those who are involved. Don't pull others for opinions. I told you to get back to this. Remember the, the magnified social media thing? Sometimes, parents, what we do, rather than try to search it out, we react from what our kids say. Then we blow up social media or our friends. Can you believe this happened? Facebook post. I am just not happy. I'm not happy to think that a child, no, you wouldn't say your child, a child would be treated this way. 
Let me give you a situation and you tell me what you think. Now, parents, three things there. That is no way to handle a problem. It is no way to solve a problem, but it is the way to create greater problems. My Bible says if I have a problem, I can go to those people. It does not say that I can pull all my friends and find out if they agree with me or not. It does not say, listen, um, ask, ask 14 other moms, and if they're just as mad as you, then you've got a good case. I've been in these conversations. Well, the moms aren't happy. Well, good. Tell them to call me. Be happy to talk to them. Well, they won't. They won't talk, call you. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I know that we're not solving problems. We're creating problems. I'm just trying to help you. The Bible says, answer matter before you hear it. It's folly and shame to you. Honor of kings to search it out. It doesn't say anywhere that I can find to go pull your buddies. I don't find it in there. And teenagers, this goes for you as well. It goes for you as well. You know, you have someone, a teacher that you think mistreated you. Who do you go to? Your friends. And you're complaining and running your mouth. It's no way to handle a problem, no way to solve a problem, creates greater problems. You handle it the right way. Matthew 12, 36 says, This is why I say unto you that every idle word that men speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Last one is this one, last blank there. Listen to the responses. Once your question, listen to them. With an honest, okay. And pray for wisdom in this. What you will not find in that list right now is react. You can look for it's not on there. It's not on there. You may have to make some decisions. You may have to get some clarification. You may need to even... Have some biblical confrontation. We react in the flesh. Remember, be swift to hear. Or say it this way. <laughs> Listen up. Slow to speak. Shut up. Slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Last phrase there. I desire to raise my children to be honest in all situations of life and to model a Christ-like response when situations arise. Again, I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm trying to bring some truth and help us. All right? I, I want to help us as parents so that we react the right way. Well, we, will, we will be guilty of this at times as parents. And um, hopefully with God's grace and his truth that brings truth to parenting, we can have the right response with truth from the word of God and be the right parents.